Today. My name is Ken Holbrook. I'm the mayor here, and I want to welcome everybody here today. And uh, we've got some honored guests. Uh, it's a special occasion we're having today. And I'm proud to be here, proud it's happening in our town. And uh, we've got, uh, got a lot going on in town here, and we hope you enjoy it while you're here. Visit with us a while. And with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to my favorite. Board of Supervisors member from Russell County, and I'm going to invite her up here to, to say whatever's on her mind. Lou Ann, come on up here. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and I am Lou Ann Wallace, and I'm very pleased to be here to welcome you to this dedication ceremony recognizing one of Russell County's bravest heroes, James Ira Spurrier Jr. And we do claim him as others do. Um, as Russell County's current chair, I want to say a hearty thank you to Junior because it's because of young men and women much like him that we are here today. This memorial is a testament that we must never forget the sacrifices and we must continue to honor those who came before us and blazed the way. This project has been a labor of love and pure determination by a committee, mostly by one man, who makes sure that we never lose sight of our history, and that man is Frank Kilgore. So I give him an applause today. Thank you, Frank. Frank made calls, sent texts, he emailed for this cause. He donated his time, his efforts, and his money, and now the memorial is on his building. So thank you, Frank. The committee went to work, dollars were committed, an artist was commissioned, and now we have a memorial. I would like to thank and recognize those who contributed to this memorial. The Russell County Board of Supervisors, the Town of St. Paul Town Council and Mayor Holbrook, Dominion Energy, Joffrey Hensley, Operation Manager of VCheck, New People's Bank, Todd Asbury is CEO, Russell County Reclamation and John Matney, First Bank and Trust, Mark Nelson, CEO. We appreciate you. So thank our sponsors for this wonderful memorial. And at this time, thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask the Reverend Matt Justice to come forward and lead us in prayer and pledge. If everyone will please stand. Thank, thanks, Lynn. It's great to be here this evening. And as always, St. Paul does not disappoint. Um, and like Luann said, my, my political career did start right upstairs here in this building. And, and it's never a doubt that when Frank Kilgore puts his mind to getting something done, he gets it done. And this is just another testament to that. And as far as the phone calls and the text, mine usually roll in about 3 a.m. And uh, Frank, Frank has often said, I'm the only person that usually will text him back at 3, 315. So uh, anyway, but thank you all for being here. I have the distinct pleasure today to be, to be joined by the majority leader of uh, the House of Delegates. That's someone who, again, needs no introduction. That's Delegate Terry Kilgore. He's here. And the Deputy uh, who and Terry will also be representing, I think, many of you very soon. And we have the deputy majority leader joining us today as well, and that's Delegate Israel O'Quinn. He's standing right over there, and he will be representing many of you very soon too, I hope. So uh, let's give them a warm welcome for being here this evening. We also, I noticed that we have Shane Clem from uh, U.S. Senator Mark Warner's office. Shane, thanks for being here as well. Uh, it's, an, it's my honor today to introduce our wonderful Lieutenant Governor Winsome Earl Sears, a great friend of Southwest Virginia. Winsome Earl Sears, a native of Kingston, Jamaica, immigrated to the United States at age of six. She enlisted in the United States Marine Corps where she served as an electrician from 83 until 1986. Her identity as a Marine is ingrained in her and she credits the Corps with teaching her important lessons about leadership and self-discipline that she continues to implement today. In addition to her various appointments, she has served as the Vice President of the State Board of Education, as a Presidential appointee of the U.S. Census Bureau, and as Co-Chair of the African American Committee, and the Advisory Committee on Women Veterans to the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. 
Winston was first elected in 2002 to majority Black House of Delegates District, a first for a Republican in Virginia since 1865. She is the first female Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia and the first black female elected to statewide office. As Lieutenant Governor, Winston presides as the President of the Senate, wherein we are in session, so she is my boss. Uh, Madam President, it is an honor as always, to have you back here in Southwest Virginia. We are grateful for your leadership and your service to our nation and to the Commonwealth of Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give our, 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 my president, our Lieutenant Governor Winsome Earl Sears, a warm Southwest Virginia welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to say that again. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. There you are. How good it is to be with you again this year. And for such an honor, for such an honor to award our House Joint Resolution to such a commendable man. And we wish he was here today to receive it personally. And thank you everyone for coming out. Thank you, delegates and Senator, Madam. Thank you all. And without further ado, I'm gonna get right to it. This is House Joint Resolution number 322. It was offered March 1st, 2022. And it celebrates the life of James Ira Spurrier. Whereas James Ira Spurrier Jr., also known as Junior Spurrier, a decorated veteran who served our nation during World War II and its distinguished Virginian who was born and raised in Castlewood in Russell County, died on February 25th, 1984. And whereas Junior Spurrier helped support his siblings and moved often while his family sought job opportunities during the Great Depression, and whereas Junior Spurrier joined many of the other young men of his generation in service to our nation during World War II and deployed to the Pacific Theater in 1942. After sustaining injuries in New Guinea, he returned to the United States for medical treatment and then redeployed to Europe in 1944. And Whereas Junior Spurrier was assigned to Company G, the 134th Infantry Regiment, 35th Infantry Division, and became a messenger and scout after his promotion to Staff Sergeant. And whereas in 1944, September, Junior Spurrier earned the Distinguished Service Cross and Purple Heart for his heroic leadership during a one-man assault on a heavily fortified enemy position near Les Saint Christophe, France. And whereas the following November, Junior Spurrier earned the Congressional Medal of Honor and similar medals from France and Belgium for his gallantry during Company G's advance on the village of Aiken, France when he circled around to the rear of the village by himself. And whereas Junior Spurrier single-handedly assaulted numerous enemy positions during an intense hours long battle by using American and German captured weapons and ammunition. And whereas Junior Spurrier forced the enemy to retreat into a barn filled with hay and barrels of fuel, then set the barn on fire and killed or captured several Nazi soldiers and one officer. And whereas over the course of these two battles, Junior Spurrier accounted for 36, 36 enemy casualties and 32 captured prisoners, earning the nickname Task Force Spurrier. And whereas Junior Spurrier has also been referred to the unofficial Sergeant York, 
a reference, of course, to another Appalachian warrior from the coal fields of Tennessee, Alvin C. York, who was himself one of the most decorated United States Army soldiers of World War I. And whereas Junior Spurrier was awarded almost the same number of prestigious United States Army medals as another distinguished hero of World War II, Audie Murphy, receiving only one Purple Heart less. And whereas Junior Spurrier returned to the Commonwealth and briefly paid as pitcher of the Galax Leafs baseball team, then re-enlisted, re-enlisted in the military and served during the Korean War. And whereas in later life, Junior Spurrier operated a radio and television repair business and subsequently retired to Eastern Tennessee. And whereas Junior Spurrier was laid to rest in Mount Home National Cemetery in Tennessee, and whereas Junior Spurrier is fondly remembered and greatly missed by nearest family members and friends, and whereas Sergeant York and Audie Murphy, Junior Sperrier has never been recognized by the Commonwealth of Virginia. And whereas a fundraising effort is underway and finally here to create this memorial in Castlewood with plans to display this resolution in bronze. Now therefore, be it resolved by the House of Delegates, the Senate concurring that the General Assembly hereby note with great sadness, the loss of James Ira Spurrier Jr., a brave Virginian who served our nation during World War II and the Korean War, and be it further resolved that the clerk of the House of Delegates prepare copies of this resolution for presentation to the family of James Ira Spurrier Jr. as an expression of the General Assembly's respect for his memory and to be placed at his memorial site in Castlewood on behalf of all Virginians and veterans. My fellow veterans, my fellow Virginians, this is a man who, of course, you have heard all that he did by himself. He was a one-man army. Even after he was wounded, he redeployed, went back into battle, and did some of his best work. And after World War II was over, he decided he wanted back in again and went to the Korean War. Some of us have seen, as we would think, tragedy. But I tell you, this man, two wars, two wars, indeed, he was deserving of the Congressional Medal of Honor. And when I think about that medal, I find that it was first presented in 1863. Now, there have been about 40 million of us who have served in the armed forces since the Civil War, but of that number, only 3,493 have ever received the Congressional Medal of Honor. The medal is earned it is not one, so you will not hear any Congressional Medal recipient ever were to refer to as a winner of the medal. And that is because it is recognition, recognition of heroic proportions. You know, he died, Junior did, three days after my first child was born. And I can tell you that it is an amazing feat to win this medal. And I want to show you something that we veterans understand, and it's this is how we wear them. It's called dog tags. And of course, I have two more than I should, but one would go on the on the body, and one would be used for recognition. And thank God that he never used these because he wouldn't have been able to do all that he did. And we don't know all the lives that he saved because he did not die. So we thank all of our veterans who came home 
and we also recognize those who did not because they gave the ultimate sacrifice. So we thank you and we thank, we thank our General Assembly that we finally recognized a great Virginia. Thank you all for being here. Thank you.